So Hurricane Debbie just swept through Tampa Bay and the entire state of Florida last month, bringing heavy rainfalls, tornadoes, and flash floods, and to this day, some communities are still left dealing with the aftermath. Now this has raised a critical question for those of you considering moving here, is Tampa, Tampa Bay, or Florida still an ideal place to live? Well, in today's video, we're going to delve into the reality of hurricanes and flood risk here in the Tampa Bay area to help you make an informed decision about whether this is the right spot for you. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala, and I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here. And a little over five and a half years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost everything we own, packed up our family of five, headed 1,200 miles south here to the Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since, except for the hurricane parts. <laughs> you know, in the six summers we've been here now, we have been through three hurricane scares and we're going to get deep into that. But what I really want to do is help you guys kind of understand what it's like to live in an area that is at risk to flooding and hurricanes. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. Now, before we cover anything else, it's important to understand Tampa's geographic location to get a better perspective. The state of Florida is located in the Atlantic hurricane zone or the hurricane belt, if you will, making it more susceptible to hurricanes than any other state outside of the zone. In fact, Florida ranks as the number one state in the U.S. that experiences the most hurricanes overall, with a total of 120 hurricanes from 1851 through 2022. More data to come, of course. In general, the Gulf Coast states, Florida, Texas, Louisiana, are the most vulnerable to hurricanes, followed by the East Coast and the Mid-Atlantic states. While hurricanes can occur anytime, the Atlantic hurricane season typically spans from June 1st through November 30th. Now I'm making this video the first week of September, which is really the start of the peak hurricane season. On average, Florida experiences a tropical storm or hurricane every three years. However, it's important to note that this frequency can vary and there may be years with multiple major hurricanes making landfall. Now here's the cool part. Tampa hasn't experienced a direct hit from a major hurricane since 1921. But as proven by Hurricane Debbie, Tampa remains vulnerable to these powerful storms, even those that make landfall nearby so that we experience strong winds, storm surges, coastal flooding, and property damage, even though we haven't taken a direct hit. And speaking of Hurricane Debbie, because this is so fresh in my mind, let's just do a little recap of the impact there. The rain topped a foot in many areas. Storm surge was two to four feet on the coast. This led to historic flooding of the Manatee River with a record crest of 20.1 feet at the Rye Bridge, producing major flooding in the area. Widespread flooding, particularly in Manatee and Sarasota, counties just to the south here of Tampa. Mayaka City saw the highest rainfall with over 21 inches in a 24-hour period. That's absolutely mind-blowing. Places like Lakewood Ranch, Parrish, and Pinellas Park all saw well over a foot of rain as well. Even without hurricanes, heavy rainfall can cause flooding in Tampa Bay, particularly in the low-lying areas. And I've talked about these before. You know, there are areas in St. Pete like Short Acre, South Tampa definitely has its challenges, and there are many more like that as well. Gulfport, as an example, is another area that you definitely want to be mindful of. And since the city of Tampa is surrounded by water, the risk of flooding, even from rising sea levels, is also high. Tampa General Hospital will literally put up seawalls whenever we are threatened by a hurricane. It's pretty interesting that you see that, but it's in a really low-lying area over on Davis Islands, so you got to really keep that in mind also. The intense rainfall events can also overwhelm drainage systems, resulting in inland flooding, and truthfully, even the increased developments along coastal areas are affecting flooding. We just saw that happen down on Lakewood Ranch. A tip for you would be to research potential flood risk in specific areas through these resources sources that I'm going to put in the description down below. You've got FEMA.gov. One of my favorite things to use here, I live in Pinellas County, is the Pinellas County Flood and Evacuation Zone map. I really share this with clients when they're considering moving to the area. And this really is a challenge. Three times this week, Mila and I flooded to the tune of six inches up against my back door. And I don't love it, y'all. Now, thank goodness most of our clients have never had to deal with anything like this, but this is part of wanting to live so close to the beach. We've got to deal with things like this. I know some people are hearing me say this, like, Juan, why would you say this? Like, don't you help people relocate to the area and you're going to scare them away? To be quite honest, I need to share the truth, period. You get the pros and cons with everything. And with having incredible weather majority of the year, we still have our own challenges. And dealing with hurricanes, dealing with flooding, those are things that if you're going to live in a subtropical area that is as flat as Florida and as low as Florida, these are things you have to take in consideration. Now, personally, knowing what I know, 
would it stop me from moving here again? The answer is no, but that's me. Again, you can target areas that are on the good side of this. So keep that in mind, but they are our natural disasters and we don't control everything. So we also have to keep that in perspective as well. So the next thing I want to address here is flood insurance. And we get a lot of comments on our videos. If you look down below with people saying Florida is uninsurable, you can't get insurance. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. Is insurance expensive? 100%. Can it be out? outrageous in certain areas? Absolutely. You know, on the Atlantic side of Florida, the average insurance rate is significantly higher than it is here in Tampa Bay. I mean, to the tune of nine to $10,000 on average. Can you see insurance quotes that high in Tampa Bay? Absolutely. If you live in areas that are prone to flooding, homes that have been flooded multiple times or at least one time before, that's going to make your insurance more expensive. The age of your home makes your insurance more expensive. Is your home block or stick built? Those two things are considerably different when it comes to wind mitigation and risk because a home that is made completely out of wood versus a home that is made completely out of concrete, those things are going to respond different in high wind environments, in flooding type of environments. What is the elevation of your property? That is another thing that's going to come into consideration. The age of your roof, the type of windows you have, do you have hurricane windows? All of these things make a huge difference on your insurance. And I've shared this before, y'all. My insurance uh, last year was $2,450. $53 or something like that it was less than $2,500. This year, we had the full 14% increase that they're allowed to give to us. And I believe we're just under $2,800 now. And, and some of you are hearing that and you're mortified. But for where I live, I live less than two miles to the water. For where I live, trust me, that is very inexpensive. You can get reasonable insurance for living on, on the coast. I won't ever say it's going to be cheap. But we do have clients who are buying new construction homes in area like Wesley Chapel, in areas like Paris in areas like Lando Lakes and San Antonio who are buying new homes, four bedroom or three bedroom homes, 2,000 square feet, non-flood, non-evacuation zones, and they are getting insurance, literally binding insurance for twelve dollars or $1,300 annually. Now, will it go up in the future? I mean, if I'm a homeowner, I'm banking on it. But again, there are rules around what the increases can be. So you need to know those things. If your property is not homesteaded in the state of Florida, they can give you the maximum increase, which I believe is 40% on a second home or an investment property. So y'all, you got to be aware of these things. We had to actually send proof of our homestead exemption into to the insurance company to get the discount because they tried to slap me with that 40% increase, but I knew the rules, right? It's important to have somebody who understands these things on your side. You want a great insurance agent. You want a great real estate agent and a great real estate team who can help you through this process too. And you know, I forgot to mention, I am a licensed real estate agent. And just so far this year, we've had over 270 Zoom calls with people just like you who are considering moving to the area. So if that is you, you are interested in having a deeper conversation feel free to jump into my calendar, all my contact information down below. There is a link to my calendar where you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. I would be honored to be your representative and help you guys make that transition. Now, there's some other cool things that do happen here in the state of Florida. We do get a tax break right now. There is a hurricane readiness thing going on where we can get tax breaks on things like generators, which is a great, nice to have here in Tampa. I don't think it's an absolute must, but it depends on where you live. Some of our areas have all of the power lines buried. Their disruption is very few and far between. I mean, honestly, guys, we've been here for almost six years and I've shared this before. I don't think we've ever been out of power for more than, than two hours max. And I think that's happened four times and only the one time was at two hours. Usually our power is restored within 20 minutes. So we've been very fortunate, but I know that there are other areas that aren't as stable. So keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to the reality of living in Tampa Bay, Tampa really is a beautiful place to live. We've got world-class beaches super high quality of life our art is amazing the culture is incredible here our job market is still booming We've got beautiful neighborhoods and so many more benefits i've made so many videos on this channel that you can go check out about wonderful areas to live here however i do understand that the threat of hurricanes and flooding can make a lot of people anxious and we were some of those people as well but what i've learned over time is while we do have to be cognizant and we do need to be vigilant and we need to be ready it has not impacted our lives as much as we thought it would. And I'm going to give the big caveat of yet. At the end of the day, 
there's the possibility that could happen at any time. And for me and my family, we've just made a decision that, you know, if it's looking like it's going to be a strong Cat 3 or more, we're probably going to either go to Orlando or we may, you know, decide to hunker down as well. But we really don't want to play roulette. Here's the cool thing. You usually get a fair amount of notice. Not always. If you look back to Ian and what happened in Fort Myer, that hurricane was slated to hit Tampa Bay. And about eight hours before, it had made a pretty hard shift and it was headed directly for Fort Myers. And if you know anything about the state of Florida, you can't just pack up and try to run away with four hours notice or five hours notice. You're going to get stuck out in a dangerous spot and that's not a good place to be. So we're right in the heat of hurricane season. I want to make sure that I'm sharing as transparently as I possibly can on my channel. That way you you guys are informed and you can make a qualified decision about making a move here to the greater Tampa Bay area. And again, if you are considering making that move, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of our contact information is listed down below. I hope you got a ton of value out of today's video. YouTube is going to put two more videos up here that it thinks you're going to love and is going to help you make that decision as well. And as always, until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.